Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how you can work out the mean from using frequency tables. And also we'll do an example where we've got group data. But first of all, what we've got here is discrete data. We've got the actual values. These values here, these observations X, represent the number of suites found in a tube of suites. And 16 tubes were examined. If you were to count these up, we've got 16 observations here. So when it comes to working out the mean, all we need to do is find out what the total number of suites were and share that evenly between 16 tubes. Now, OK, it's not going to be too hard to type these values into your calculator and then just divide by 16. But imagine you had a huge data set. What we can do is we can compress this data into what is called a frequency table. I'll show you. It goes something like this. What we do is we set up our observed value x and you can see that the values that we've got range from 36, then they go 37, 38, 39 and 40. So we would write our observations in a column like so. And then we would have another column called the frequency. We'll just call it by the letter F. Frequency is how many times an observation occurred. So 36, you see, occurred 1, 2, 3, 4. So just mark in the 4 there. 37 occurred 3 times. 38 occurred 6 times. And 39, 2, and the 40 once. Now we know that to find the mean, we've got to add up all of the values and divide by how many we've got. How many we've got is given by the total in this column. It's called sigma for the sum of sigma of the frequencies. If you work this out, you get 16. Now we need to find the total, but what we do is we find subtotals, say the total of all these 36s. And to get that, all I've got to do is do 36 times 4, because it occurred 4 times. And when it comes to finding the total of the 37s, I can do the sum 3 times 37, and so on. So I can get all these subtotals if I create another column. And that column is going to be the observed value then times the frequency. So for the 36, I have four 36s, and if I do four 36s, I get 144. Three 37s give me 111. Six 38s give me 228. And then you've got two 39s, which come to 78. And finally, just the 140, which is 40. So these are the subtotals and then we need to add them up. And if you add them up, it's given by the sum of x times f. Add this column up, which is just like adding all these values up, and you find it comes to 601. So when it comes to working out the mean x bar, all we need to do is total this data. Well, we've got the total now from all these subtotals. It's sigma xf, and we share that total equally amongst the number of tubes we had, the number of observations, which was the total frequency, which in this case was 16. So if we fill that in, we've got 601 suites shared between the 16 tubes, and that comes to 37.5625 if you do it on the calculator. That's the number of suites that each tube should theoretically hold in order that we would have a total of 601 suites in all the tubes. Well, you can't really have that value. Let's just approximate it. Let's say it's 37.6 to 3 
significant figures. 3SF. Now this was an example on discrete data where we had the actual values. But sometimes you'll get continuous data. Say for instance the height of people. And I've got a table here where we've got the height of a number of people. Their height measured in centimetres. And what I've done is I've grouped those measurements up into what is called classes. When we take a class like this, 150 to 160, what it means is that any observation in this class is greater than or equal to the lower value here, 150, but less than this value, less than 160. So anybody in this interval or class would be greater than or equal to 160 centimetres, but less than 170 centimetres, and so on. So we've got, say, five students here, which were greater than or equal to 160 centimetres, but less than 170 centimetres. So how do we work out the mean height here in situations like this? We don't know the actual heights of these people. But what we can do is estimate their heights. We can say that let our observations x be the midpoints of these class intervals. So the midpoint of 140 to 150 is going to be 145. So we just put 145 in here. And in the midpoint of 150 to 160, it's going to be 155, and so on. So if you fill these values in, you're going to get the following. So, but when you get down to 180 to 185, just take a little bit more care, the midpoint there is going to be 182.5. Now we've got a table very similar to what we had up here. We've got our observations, we've got our frequency. We're saying that We've got two students that, was, that are roughly 145 centimetres. We can't guarantee that. We don't know what their measurements were. But we're going to have an estimate of 145. So all we can do now is just estimate x bar, the mean. And to do that then, following what we did before, we need another column to work out the subtotals, xf. So we need to do 2 times 145, and if you do that, you're going to get 290. And if you put in 4 times 155, you're going to get 620, and 5 times 165, 825, and so on. Okay. The next one comes out to be 525, and then 182.5. So we've got our subtotals. How many students did we have then? We need to know. That would be the sum of the frequencies, sigma f. Add that column up, you find that you've got 15 students. What was their total height? That would be the sum of all of these values. And that would be sigma xf. That total comes to 2442.5. Now we can only estimate the mean, so if we just write the estimated mean x bar, all we need to do is sigma xf all over sigma f. And if you do that sum, you're going to have 2442.5 divided by the 15 students. So if they were all the same height, that height would come out to be 162.83 recurring centimetres. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea then how you can find the exact mean when you've got discrete values and you put them in a frequency table and when you've got group data or continuous data where you have to 
estimate the mean through your group frequency table. Hopefully you can see how you do it by selecting the midpoints. Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial.